All right, Matt, Bellator 231, our co-main event of the evening in the light heavyweight division. And listen, Carl Albrechtson's making his Bellator debut. This is a guy that I thought at one point, maybe he's one of those guys you try and build around in the UFC. I mean, he's fought really good competition in the past. His only two losses are to big names in Yuri Prohaksha, your rising light heavyweight champion. Really, really good fighter, as well as... A guy in Valentin Moldavsky, who is like the creme de la creme at heavyweight. He's one of those crown jewels of prospects that Bellator somehow wrangled away from Ryzen. Maybe we see a bit of cross promotion. We got Bellator and Ryzen in Japan coming up soon. But focusing on this division and this fight in particular, you've got Mr. Wonderful welcoming Carl Albrechtson to Bellator. And I'll break down Carl Albrechtson a little bit. I mean, he definitely has finishing type of power. He trains at a decent gym in Pancras of Sweden. Some good training partners in and around his weight classes. He's got Sebastian Katastam, who's the one championship welterweight um, champion. They get to train back and forth. Katastam has a fight coming up this week as well. And then he also has Oliver Enkamp, who, you know, had a couple fights in UFC that didn't go all that great. But he got a finish in his Bellator debut. So a couple of decent Swedes to train with. But he's taking on Mr. Wonderful. And Matt, what can you tell us about Phil Davis since he's been away from the UFC? So Phil Davis, you kind of know what you're going to get in every single Phil Davis fight. It's going to be a very wrestling-heavy game plan. He does kind of strike almost too much, if you ask me. He's such a good wrestler, and his top control is really good, and he has good submissions. But he's not afraid to kind of like stand up and kind of, kind of risk his stand-up, uh, for lack of a better term. He's got good power, but he doesn't really move his head all that well. Stands very square, and he's kind of slow on the feet. All that being said, Phil Davis should be able to win this fight. His wrestling is at such a high level that him and Ryan Bader just kind of cancel each other out at a certain point. And that's why, like, they're probably the two best light heavyweights, excluding Vadim Nemkov. But Phil Davis and Ryan Bader, they just kind of fight to a stalemate, so then you kind of have to have Phil Davis fight everyone else. And I mean, Phil Davis's record in Bellator, listen, the guy's 7-2 and two in, in the light heavyweight division. I mean, the split decision loss to Bader, as well as the split decision loss to leave the UFC against Bader. And then he had a split against Vadim Nemkov over in Israel. That's not a fight that you have in Israel, but still... Listen, the guys look good. I mean, his fight against Liam McGeary, you can say McGeary's over the hill, but that's a pretty Very decent tune-up fight to get back at the top of the division where Phil Davis always is. He's been an alliance guy for the longest time. He's a Penn State wrestler, just like Ed Ruth. If we have a quick look at the odds, Matt, no surprise, Phil Davis minus 350 favorite. All Brexton, albeit a good fighter at plus 275. You're taking Davis here? Yeah, I'm taking the more proven Davis. I just think his wrestling's going to be a little bit too much. I think this is too much for All in his debut. I wish they gave him, you know, not a lesser yeah, talent. But yeah, give him somebody that he can start to build a name off. Because this is a guy that you put Carl All into the Bellator European Series. Exactly. He could That's really cool. pop off. And it's just kind of a shame that they're just throwing him right to the wolves so quick against a Mr. Wonderful Phil Davis. So really looking forward to the fight. Bellator 231, Bellator 232, and UFC Singapore. Two-minute predictions here on YouTube for Fight Night Picks. Let's get into it.